This is Olga Kirschenbaum with nine minutes of Creative Wisdom Podcast, where creatives share their wisdom. It is six questions in nine minutes because creatives have a short attention span. <laughs> so let's get to it. In a few sentences, tell me who you are and what you do. I'm Dennis Mosley Williams. I'm the founder of Dennis Mosley Williams Strategic Consulting. I'm an author and a blogger. I help people make more money doing what they love. Love that. So what is your favorite part about being a creative leader, Dennis? Um, there is something I'm really, really good at. And other people are not. Okay. And not only am I really good at it, maybe this is why I like it so much. I love to do it. So doing what I love solves problems for other people in a very meaningful way. That is the, my most favorite part, I guess. Shining the light in the corners for people where they otherwise can't see it, helping them see a little bit differently. Definitely that's my favorite part. Beautiful. So I speak to a lot of creatives who will avoid the money side of business. They'll mm -hmm. pretty much do anything to avoid it. Tell me your thoughts on that. You're doomed. <laughs> so the money side's a big. The money side is a big is a big thing, right? So there's there's the front of the house, the back of the house. That well, you don't like putting a price on. You can't figure out a price of your work. You don't like to send invoices. You don't like to do billing. You don't like to collect the money. You don't like to go to the bank. Like the money side can be a really big thing. So I'm going to be really, 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 really candid. Every successful artist in the world is also a very successful business. You cannot lie to yourself and think you can ignore the money side and believe you're going to get anywhere. You will not. And, and, and it will, to be a successful creative person, you got to focus 100% on being creative, right? Like your whole life's got to pour into it. Okay. Ignoring the cash is just to accept that you're going to have this little simmering brush fire your whole life that will leach away your creative uh, ability and your ability to focus. Mm. That's, it's preposterous to think you can have nothing to do with the money. Hire a bookkeeper when you're tiny little we, and as you grow you're, and your financial uh, issues are a little bit more sophisticated, so should your accounting professionals be. You cannot hide from that. Turn pro. You can't, that's an amateur opinion, candidly. I love that. I know. So who are the creatives that you admire or have inspired you on your journey? Um, I have always, so here's my confession. I see business is art. I didn't say it. Andy Warhol did, right? Andy Warhol said like business, you know, making money is art. And business is, and all art is good. And business, I think, is something like it's the most, it's the most fascinating kind of art. I love business. I see business that way. Okay. Um, and I've always seen a parallel between artists and business owners. It's the same idea. You might not think so listening, but just hear me out. At the end of the day, you're trying to reach an audience. You've got something to say. It might be, I, you know, I have a big social statement I want to make with this song, this sculpture, this performance. It might be, I have something to say. I've got software that'll help you uh, do your accounting quicker. Either way, it's the same. The end result is you want to impact your audience. You want to matter to them. You want to keep them and help you bring more. Okay. So these are my three, technically four. <laughs> I'm a creative. I can't just have three. The first is Seth Godin. Mm. Everybody's a fan, right? I maintain that that guy's entire stream of consciousness, he doesn't even know this, exists just to think about my problems. <laughs> <laughs> How is that? If I ever ceased to exist, he would run out of things to write about. Yes, I'm convinced. <laughs> Joe Pine and Jim Gilmore, they count as one because they wrote a book together called The Experience Economy. Mm. Okay. It shaped my work. It changed the impact I made in my life. And then the final one, and this is for absolutely everybody needs to go read this book, 
It's written by Stephen Pressfield. It's called The War of Art. Not The Art of War. That's another book. The War of Art. And it's about turning pro. And in your last question about, you know, they, they want to ignore the money. What do you think? And I ended by saying that is an amateur's opinion. If you want to be an artist, not only then approach it like it's a job. Mm -hmm. Get up and go to work. I want to be a writer, but I spend all my time high in coffee shops looking for inspiration. No, you should just get a job at the coffee shop. You'd be further ahead. Yeah. Get up, get your ass in the chair and write every day like it's your job. I beg your pardon. Love it. Mm -hmm. So what is the one piece of wisdom or advice that other creatives should know? I think what I was just saying is your, your success as a creative person has less to do with your idea being brilliant than it does with your execution being brilliant. Mm. An av you know that person that you're, you don't want to admit you're envious of, that you feel some jealousy of? That person that does what you do, but they don't do it as well and they're not as smart as you and they haven't been doing it as long? And they're just wrong enough that nobody really realizes how insanely wrong they are. And if you want to pull your hair out and it drives you crazy, you're looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> Don't look at their idea. Look at their execution. Somewhere they're doing something smarter and better than you. And that's where, where, they, that's where they are. Success has less to do with brilliant ideas than it does brilliant execution. That's a fact. Powerful. So now the most important question of the podcast Kakaya Vasha Nubima Musica, or in English, what's your favorite music? Oh, no question. <laughs> and it will be everybody's. Could we just do a nine minute podcast on this, please? Um, <laughs> the band is called The Tragically Hip, and they are my most favorite band. I, can, I don't mind letting everybody know that I'm pushing 50. <laughs> And the hip have been my band since I was like, in one way or another, probably about 16. And uh, there's a wonderful documentary you can watch on them for free on YouTube called Long Time Running. And uh, just check those guys out. Start it with, their, with a great album called Up To Here. The Tragically Hip, the album's called Up To Here, Go Nuts. <laughs> you think you're welcome for the rest of your life. They'll become your soundtrack. Awesome. Thank you, Dennis, for being on. What is the best way for the listeners to connect with you? The best way is to just come and join the conversation. Come to our website and sign up for our blog or send us a text. Text us the word SHIFT to 33777 or come and visit our website, mosleywilliams.com. Awesome. I'll include that in the show notes. Right on, man. This is Olga Kirschenbaum with nine minutes of Creative Wisdom Podcast, where creatives share their wisdom. Make sure you check out my blog at rags to riches consulting.com to get money insights you haven't heard before.